Inside Michigan Football is presented by Meyer. You guys, the 21 team, did something for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Every man, woman, and child in the state of Michigan, you have given them a tremendous gift. Congratulations. Let's sing the victors as loud and proud as we've ever sung. Woo. One, two, you know what to do. Hail to the victors, now in hail to the country heroes. Hail, hail to Michigan, the leaders and best. Hail to the victors, now in hail to the country heroes. Hail, hail to Michigan, the champions of the world. It doesn't get any better than that. A Michigan locker room after a 42-27 victory over Ohio State in a huge key game. Welcome to Inside Michigan Football, everybody. Jim Branstetter along with John Jansen. And, John, uh, it doesn't get any better than that, does it? It doesn't. I mean, from for, for these kids to be able to experience that, the rush on the field, and we'll talk about the game in a minute, but the, whatever happened after the game, the fans rushing the field, the, the, the moment where you know you're in victory formation, it's going to be a win, uh, and then singing the victors in the locker room, everything that they're going to experience tonight, it's, it's just an unbelievable experience. You and I have both had that experience, and we've been waiting and waiting and waiting for these kids to be able to, to share that with us. And it's almost one of those things for those of us who have had that experience, and because we're a member of this team, if you will, you want someone else on the team to experience that too. And I found that in the broadcast booth with Dan Deardorff. As a broadcaster, he never has experienced a victory over Ohio State. He was moved emotionally to tears because celebrating that victory, he was so close to Michigan, and you and I both feel the same way. It's an emotional win for all of us that this team put basically Wolverine Nation on their back and kind of righted or wrong that's been going on for the last decade. Yeah, and Jim Harbaugh said it in the locker room that this is the start of something special. And it's not just this year. Yeah, th this was a big win. They're 11-1. and one. They're Big Ten East champions, but there's work to be done. They get a chance to go down to Indianapolis for a Big Ten championship. They get a chance to compete for the college football playoffs, for, for the right to, to be in those playoffs. But it's also, and, and I've mentioned this earlier, it's a chance to propel this program. What is in store for this team, for this program? We don't know, but we know that they've earned a right to go to Indianapolis. They have indeed. And the other thing I think you have to look at this season in total and the job that Jim Harbaugh did all the way back to the offseason, the hiring of the Mike Hartz and the Ron Bellamy's and the Mike McDonald's and the new staff, and he brought them in and they changed the attitude on this football team. And then people said... This team might finish fourth or fifth mm -hmm. in the Big Ten East. It now goes to Indianapolis as Big Ten East champion. The job Jim did, the job this team did, and he said it all along. He loved the way they worked, they didn't flinch, and they liked each other. And I think it proved it against Ohio State in an unbelievably thrilling victory. This was a big win and a dominant win for a Michigan football team, and it started in the opening drive of the game. Michigan loses the toss, Ohio State defers, and they took the opening drive, go 75 and score. That's a statement, and it was on the ground. They, they threw the ball, they were aggressive offensively. Like you can't win games like that. You can't win championships like that. How many times have we heard that this year? Exactly. And that's what, what, that's what part makes this even more sweet, because at the beginning of the year, when they're running over Washington and some of the other teams in Wisconsin, everybody said, well, you can't beat Ohio State like that. Well, that is the exact game plan that you need to beat Ohio State this year. Who knows if it works next year? We're not worried about that right now. This is an opportunity to put together a game plan, possess the football, and this football team, offensively and defensively, won this game up front. And that game, with the opening drive, Michigan still fell behind in the first half. Ohio State took a 10-7 lead. The next possession, and you want to talk about sending a message and letting the favorite on the other side of the field know, we're here to stay, guys. They come back and score again to take a 14-10 lead. That, to me, was as important a drive as any in the first half to reestablish their control. And they did it with a balanced and yet aggressive offensive approach. And let's just think about the lessons that they learned this year. Penn State, they're down 17-14, sack fumble, defense gives up a field goal. They go down and score uh, to win the game. Same thing today. They had to come from behind in the first half. They had to respond when Ohio State went ahead. And then you, you think about Michigan State, a tough lesson learned. They were up 16. Today they were up 15. 
if that game and out, we, we, we wish that was a win, but the lessons that they learned there may have paid off today, and they stayed with it. They're going to Indianapolis. Yep, and they stayed with it indeed. And then in the second half, I mean, this is how you win football games against good teams. They force Ohio State three and out on their first possession because Ohio State at halftime chooses to kick a field goal, right, instead of go for it on a fourth down because Ryan Day, I think, felt – I get the ball at the beginning of the second half. I'm going to come back, and I'm going to take the lead. So Michigan stops them, the defense, three and out. They get the ball, and a little changeup by Michigan, bringing Blake Corum in, and Corum explodes on Ohio State with a little bit of more speed, not as much power as Hassan, but I think it shakes Ohio State's defense up. Oh, it certainly does. When you have a chance to come out of halftime and you go three and out and then your offense gets the ball back and you get an explosive play like that, I mean, just think about the weapons they have in the backfield now. you got Hassan Haskins, who was dominant and has been dominant all season long. You've got Donovan Edwards, who really exploded last week against Maryland. Ten catches was 170 yards. And they handed him the ball again today. But then you put Blake Corum, a healthy Blake Corum, in the mix of those three. You can be very creative, and that's what we saw today from Josh Gaddis, creativity on offense. And and aggressiveness on offense. Uh, Hassan Haskins, by the way, five touchdowns on the ground. Not bad for Hassan. But again, you can't get away from the fact that Ohio State, their receivers are just as advertised. They're unbelievable. Jackson Smith and Jigma is absolutely off the charts good. Olave, uh, Harris, they're all unbelievable, but... Michigan's pass rush, Chris, uh, David Ajabo, Aiden Hutchinson. Aiden Hutchinson with three sacks breaks the single season record. Uh, Ojabo with a huge sack late in the game that really kind of puts it away. If you pressure a great quarterback who is involved with great receivers, that quarterback sometimes isn't as good, and that's what this defense did to C.J. Stroud. Well, and C.J. Stroud is, was in the conversation for the Heisman Trophy. I think there should be another guy in the conversation for the Heisman Trophy. That's Aiden Hutchinson. The effect that he had on this game, three sacks, what he did to those offensive tackles, it was impressive. And not only that, but what he did in the run game to shut things down. And as a captain of the team, as a leader of this team, showing and, and wanting to leave a legacy, he certainly did that against Penn State, three sacks. He did that against Ohio State, and you need your best players to have your best games in the biggest moments. And, you know, it's a game where all three phases have to contribute, and Michigan against Ohio State had all three phases contribute. Special teams, defense clearly contributed. Great play by the secondary. They didn't give up any big plays. This Ohio State team lives on 60, 70-yard plays. They didn't get that. The secondary tackled offensively. They ran the football, and they were aggressive. Roman Wilson catches some big balls. Uh, Cornelius uh, Johnson catches some big balls. All three phases worked great, and it resulted in a 42-27 victory over Ohio State in the Big Ten East Championship. We've been playing Ohio State every day since January. Every workout, every 6 a.m., every 150. We've, been, we've ran. It's, it's been to beat these guys. and. When the opportunity came, we beat them. It's just an honor, you know, to be a part of this team that is making history. You know, it's been a while since we beat them, and uh, we finally did it. Man, that whole game, I was just having fun with my brothers, balling out, making plays with the boys. I mean, can't ask for anything else. No, I cried on the field. Uh, you know, it's just, you know, it's just so amazing, and you know, the the feeling that I have, you know, just for this team and you know, for this university is an amazing feeling. And, you know, it's just it's an honor, you know, be a part of this 2021 um, Michigan football team. Inside Michigan Football is brought to you in part by Meyer, official sponsor of Michigan Athletics and proud sponsors of local sports teams across the Midwest. And by Gardner White, Detroit's number one furniture and mattress store. A sea of maize and blue cascaded onto the field after the Wolverines' epic win. Michigan players found themselves surrounded with nowhere to go, and they loved every second of it. I've never seen a field rush, and that was my first one. And, um, you know, I was, I was just breaking down, crying. I saw my family just embracing each other, and it was a, it was a long walk back to the tunnel <laughs> to get there, um, you know, getting through all the fans, but they were great. Um, the stadium was so loud today. That was the first time I've ever been a part of 
you know, just people storming the field and um, things like that. So, you know, it was it was an amazing feeling. Um, you know, everybody's happy. When I need the ball and, you know, I looked at our sideline, it was just, it was surreal. Um, the, you know, the rest of our team, like they met us out on the field, the crowd rushed the field, the, the snow falling. The snow raining down like confetti, saluting the East Division champs. It's better than I could have ever expected. Um, this team is special. The guys on this team are special. The coaches, everyone in Shen Beckler Hall, it's just, you know, this is a special moment for us and a special moment for Michigan. I've been looking for this win for, for a long time now, and uh, we finally did it, you know. We're making history, so it's, it's amazing. Hutchinson said he's been visualizing this for years, and to see it come into fruition, he paused and said, is so darn cool, and it certainly is. For Inside Michigan Football, I'm Ed Kingerski. They give it to Haskins. He's around right end. There's room. He's at the 10. Breaks it at the 5. Fights his way into the end zone. Yes! Touchdown, Michigan! Coming into this game, it was going to be a lead on us kind of, kind of game. And so when we come out, we start pounding the rock, start running the ball, we start getting a little energy. Just run at them is something that we take tremendous pride in. It's Michigan football, and we went out there and, and, and proved them right about what Michigan can do. We just dominated them up front, and, you know, H2 is just, he's a special player, and he's, you know, means so much to this team, and I appreciate him so much, and it was just a dominating performance. New single season sack record with 13. Tell me how that feels. It's unbelievable. I really can't put it into words. You know, I, 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 I knew when I got it, and I was just praising God, and, you know, just so happy. And I'm um, just so, so grateful. You mighty men, you mighty men of Michigan made this happen. It happened. It's done. We're the East champions. You know how I feel right now? You know how I feel? I feel like it's just the beginning. Today's conversation with Jim Harbaugh is brought to you by Meyer, official sponsor of Michigan Athletics and proud sponsors of local sports teams across the Midwest. Your feelings for this team, your thoughts for, about this team after the game? Well, just tremendous, tremendous uh, preparation and effort, um, play after play after play. I mean, it was intensity, um, doing their job, forgetting about the last play, going to the next play with the same, same intensity. I mean, uh, up and down the roster again. I mean, guys making plays, doing their job. Um, yeah, really. I mean, Proud as, proud as heck, and, and as I told the guys in the locker room, I, uh, I truly believe it's just the beginning. Well, it, it is the beginning, and it's an opportunity to, to extend your season, but let's talk about some of those players. Um, and I, let's start with Aiden Hutchinson. Sets the single season sack record, three of those tonight. Um, your thoughts on his performance? Dominant, dominant, truly dominant uh, performance by uh, Aiden Hutchinson, uh, David Ajabo as well, and and uh, a lot of other guys, Josh Ross had a heck of a game as well. We played uh, really good up front. But, uh, you know, you're talking uh, Aiden Hutchinson. I mean, one of those guys is just the ones. One of the, one of the ones that just lifted this team on their back all season. And uh, we're not where we are without Aiden Hutchinson. He's the most... It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a battle between Hassan Haskins and and Aiden Hutchinson for for the MVP of this team. Uh, but I, I truly believe uh, Aiden should be in the Heisman conversation. Uh, it was just truly dominant. And let's talk about Hassan Haskins. By the way, I agree with you. He should be in the Heisman conversation. But um, Hassan Haskins has carried the load, especially when Blake went down uh, for a couple of games. Donovan was out, and it was Hassan Haskins that you guys have really relied upon. Yeah, without a doubt. Um, you know, the offensive line was coming off the ball, and uh, Hassan Haskins has any kind of room. I mean, his. His physicality, his vision, uh, you know, the kind of back that he is, is is incredible. Um, you know, there's times where, you know, I kind of thought they saw a ghost, and it wasn't a ghost. It was number 25, Hassan Haskins. <laughs> and let's get, let's switch back to the defense since we're just going to hop around. Um, the secondary, the performance that they had on three very good receivers um, today. Uh, you know, not any explosive plays. Uh, they just seemed to do a, a tremendous job. Sure did. Uh, um, and we knew they were going to make plays, and, and we were going to get discouraged when they did. Um, you know, we, we, we figured our offense would answer back, but uh, the amount of stops that our defense got today was, was huge. Uh, Vince Gray made some great plays on the ball. So did DJ Turner. Uh, you know, Dax, Dax Hill, uh, Brad Hawkins, uh, some of the young safeties, Rod Moore. 
uh, and, Brad, and uh, I mentioned Brad and R.J. Moten in particular. Uh, and then let's just talk about next week. Um, you guys have earned the right to extend the season. It's a trip to Indianapolis for a Big Ten championship. Yeah, uh, as I said um, to the team earlier, I mean, you know, what's it going to feel like when you, uh, you win this game? It, it truly feels like, a, like the beginning. Well, Coach, uh, obviously we're proud of the team, proud of you, happy for all of you guys, uh, and congratulations. Thank you. There's a lot of joy in Ann Arbor tonight. <laughs> yes, there will be. <laughs> we'll see you around. Thanks, Coach. Well, clearly that's a very happy Jim Harbaugh. But, John, that kind of gets a monkey off his back, doesn't it? It does for now because coming into this game, he hadn't beaten Ohio State. We know what his record is against Michigan State. We know what it is against ranked opponents. And, and all of those different things, as, as an underdog, he's able to exercise some of those demons today. And he did it by relying on his team, relying on his assistant coaches. He made a lot of tough decisions in the offseason. He's made a lot of tough decisions as head coach. And to be able to see him smile, to be able to see the joy on his face, to be able to hear him talk to his players, because it's always been, and, and we saw this in post-game interviews, hey, you know, he's doing an interview, talk to my players, talk to Eric All, talk to Cade McNamara. His excitement for his players is unparalleled. It's great to see Jim Harbaugh, a happy camper. Don't go away. When we come back, there's more coming up next on Inside Michigan Football. Our Al Rose Steel Iron Man of the Week this week is Jim Harbaugh, his entire coaching staff, the entire team, and the entire staff at the University of Michigan. When you beat Ohio State like this, in a game that means so much, it is a team effort, and that team includes everyone in Schembechler Hall, and they are our Al Rose Steel Iron Man of the Week. No matter what adversity we hit, we're, we're always bouncing back, we always have our back, and. And it's just, it's incredible to see, especially in the coaches too. Everyone believes in the coaches, everyone trusts the coaches. So it, the, the brotherhood and bond of this team is, is something special. And it's, I think it's a great part of our success. Inside Michigan Football is brought to you in part by Meyer, official sponsor of Michigan Athletics and proud sponsors of local sports teams across the Midwest. And by Gardner White, Detroit's number one furniture and mattress store. We're about ready to go here in Camp Randall. It's Big Ten football, it's November. This is fun. Saturday was the final home broadcast for legendary announcers Jim Brandstatter and Dan Deardle. Pressure's there. Sack time! Over right guard. Touchdown. Brandy has spent 43 years calling Wolverine action on radio and television. He's got some room. He breaks it at the 10, the 5, Blake Corum! Touchdown, Michigan! Dan completes his eighth season in the Michigan booth after a long career broadcasting NFL games. 98 yards in a dozen plays on a scale of 1 to 10. That drive was an 11. The former Michigan teammates have a deep passion for the program, and it comes out in every single broadcast. And Jim, that's 10 consecutive field goals made now for Quinn Nordy. Now, why do you do that? You know, that's the jinx. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Not when you're as good as he is. Oh, thank you. Um, the great and powerful one. Jim, after 43 years, it's your last call in the press box at Michigan Stadium. It's a fairy tale, John. I mean, can you imagine how lucky I am? 43 years broadcasting Michigan football. It's a home game. It's against Ohio State. It's a game that's uh, for the Big Ten East Championship. And Michigan gets a victory, and a victory that's dominant. And I'm as happy as I could be for my opportunity to have that to be the closer. But more importantly, I think Dan Deardorff enjoyed it more than anyone. And as a teammate of his, to see him revel in that victory, I'm more happy for him than I am myself. That's the kind of game it was. I am so blessed to have been there for that football game and to have that be my finale at Michigan Stadium. Like I said, it's a fairy tale. Now, let's get back to business. We're off to Indianapolis. And John, you know, you're always the one that brings us back to reality. There's still football to be played. There's still a Big Ten championship to be won. Make sure you're here next week when we talk about the Big Ten championship game in Indianapolis on Inside Michigan Football. And the Wolverines are going to go to Indianapolis with a chance to win a Big Ten title. Dan, as happy as I am for me, I'm as happy for you because this is your first time as a broadcaster to see the victory over Ohio State as a Michigan alum, as a broadcaster. Congratulations. I've got nothing to say. <laughs>